This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We've got a pair of football games to round out week number 14 in the NFL. We've got the Titans and the Dolphins and the Packers at the Giants, both going on tonight for Monday Night Football. We're going to break down both of those games, talk about some player props to stand out with Ryan Williams and getting his read on these games at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Monday by Ryan. Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W and Ryan Doubleheader coming up tonight. How are you doing today? Oh, we're doing great, Jim. Doubleheader on Monday Night Football when we're 14 weeks into the season. What's not to like? Um, this is this is great. We love we love this uh, type of action that we're able to get. Uh, we should have some two. Uh, we have two. Not should we have two interesting games here um, that uh, I'm, I'm excited to break down with you. So, yeah, what, what could be better to start off a Monday than this? I can't think of anything, honestly. And both these games, pretty interesting from a betting perspective because they've got decently large spreads, which could imply they might not be the most exciting games. But I do think there are some fun things to dissect on both sides here for each game. We're going to dive into both those here in just one second to get you for ready ready for Monday night. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Ryan is back with us once again tomorrow. We're going to talk some futures as the playoff races take shape. Talking about the top end of the NFC potentially once again as well. Uh, that'll be up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV Plus. To get FanDuel TV Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in with your FanDuel account to watch Up and Adams, Run It Back, Covering the Spread, Heat Check, Daily ISO, all in the same place. Uh, and you can also find FanDuel TV Plus on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $5 pregame money line wager required. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's begin things here, Ryan, by talking about the Titans at the Dolphins right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Dolphins are favored by 13 and a half, minus 120 on the 13 and a half. And the total in this game is 46 and a half. So, Ryan, pretty widespread here. Do you think the Titans can keep this thing close enough to cover or is it all about Miami in this game? It's all about Miami in this game, Jim. Uh, I mean, the the Titans have one hope of keeping this close, and that's to feed Derrick Henry the rock uh, and hope that he can get going. Because when Derrick Henry gets going, it is is likely when they're able to stay, you know, in, into close games when they've lost by a spread like this, which has been three times this season. You know, he hasn't even reached, I believe, the thirty yard plateau. Um, so you know, that's that's what's rough. Um, they 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 go as Derrick Henry goes. I think they need to come out 
out with an early with an early start um, and, and really be able to punch Miami in the mouth to, to get some points on the board early. Um, I still do like the under in this game as well, too, of under 46 and a half, just because like even if Miami, you know, they score a touchdown in each quarter, let's say put up 28 points, like where are the points coming from on Tennessee side? Um, they're just they're just not equipped to to be in shootouts um, of this nature. Um, traveling on the road as well too. I probably will stay away from the from the spread. Um, I can see why people you know would would take the thirteen and a half. Mike Vrabel um, has traditionally been able to coach this team up in that capacity, but um, you know it, this is Miami. Like they have a shot to be you know the number one seed and have teams travel to Miami um, in, in January to be able to to play them for a shot at the Super Bowl. So you know I I, I think that. Uh, Hopefully, Mike McDaniel is telling them as such, and they can come out here and, and put out fireworks. Yeah, I agree with you. Where it's all about the Dolphins here in this game, my model has been favored by 16 tonight, and that implies there's some value. However, the minus 13 and a half is minus 120, which means that's enough to scare me away. So I think there's value in the Dolphins. I'm not going to take it at this current number. I have it from earlier in the week at a different number. So uh, that helps. But like, 13 and a half minus 120. That's enough to scare me off. But I do think that if you are to take a side in this game, I would go towards the Dolphins, given how good that offense is, how broken the Tennessee secondary is. I think there is definitely enough there to justify the widespread. I think the more interesting part of this game, though, Ryan, is the Dolphins backfield because we saw Devon Achan come back this past week and Got a lot of garbage time work for the Dolphins, but came through on it. So let's talk about the Dolphins props here. Anything stand out to you with the Dolphins side of things? Yeah, I think you know, Mostert still has some merit, I feel like, you know, of him being um, under undervalued in the prop market. Like this is just the this has been something all season, even when Devon A. Chain was was killing it earlier on the year before the injury. Like Mike McDaniel was out there saying that you know it's a two headed monster and we're, you know, we're going to ride the hot hand, quote unquote, and things like that. But we saw them both kind of get into the mix. And when we're talking about a, a 13 and a half point favorite here, like the the numbers just aren't matching up for me. So I, I do like Mostert to be able to hit his over 45 and a half I mean plus money on uh the alt line for 50 rushing yards for him like they could still be able to get him going and he can hit that number you know by halftime um if, if things are kind of going the way uh that we expect them to for the Dolphins so I think there's merit to taking both of these guys um on their props you know outside of that I mean it's Tyreek's show uh, Tyreek Hill's world and everybody else is living in it on the Dolphins and you can see that um with the lines that have been set for him 108 and a half on his receiving yards minus 113 which is absolutely incredible he has I think t minus 210 on the money line for him or I'm sorry minus 210 on the line for him for an anytime touchdown uh which I believe was the second highest this week uh, behind Christian McCaffrey to score a touchdown so I mean you know the, the guy's close to you know he's got 400 and some yards to break. I know he needs like 500 and some yards to get to 2,000. Uh, and there's five games left. So I think that they'll try and feed him immensely um, and everywhere he goes. I think the interesting thing for Tyreek Hill is the, uh, if you go back to the receiver market, his reception prop at, at over seven and a half is plus money. And that's just been a fun one to always target for me because he's just getting targeted double digit times a game. Um, and for him to two at a connect on that is, uh, is pretty outstanding. So I love getting, love getting that prop for him if I'm getting action. Yeah. And I think the benefit for Tyree kill in a market like that is that, he gets a lot of like, obviously the down, the downfield targets are huge, but like he does get a lot of targets close to the line of scrimmage as well, which means he's giving you kind of that safety in terms of, okay, will he convert the targets into catches? He probably will. So over seven and a half for Tyree kill is plus one of six right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I agree with you on Moster, just based on the way he was used in that first half uh, last week. It implied that they still value him. I, Think eventually A Chan will pull away, but it's not happening yet. So I like A Chan tonight in general. Like playing the two game DFS slate, I'm on board with him there. But I think from a prop betting perspective, I don't believe A Chan's rushing market, uh, rushing total should be 10 yards higher than Mostert's. So that's why I think that Mostert, I agree with you, Ryan, where a bit of value on Mostert over 45 and a half uh, from a rushing perspective, very tough matchup. Uh, but like, I think the Dolphins creativity, the loss of Kevin Byard, I think that's enough to have interest in most of that number.
Let's talk about the opposing backfield here, Ryan, because Derrick Henry left early last week, but he's good to go for this week. So looking at the Titans props, anything stand out to you there? Yeah, for this one, uh, you know, Jim, again, it's like they go as Derrick Henry goes. So 54 and a half seems fairly reasonable if, if the Titans are going to be covering the spread at all. You know, for Tajay Spears, I think the interesting thing for him is if we look at the receiving market and when that gets set it, is his receptions. It, it's not up yet. Um, you can get his alt receiving uh, yards line if you, if you would like. But I think, you know, Tajay Spears, when they've been trailing, you know, this guy's seeing around three, four receptions in those games. And that would be somewhere uh, where I'd want to get action on. But I think they're going to try and, you know, get Derrick Henry going as, as, as much as they can and, and feed the guy the rock because that's, that's their path um, to be able to covering or beating this team. So um, I think that that's, that's where I want to go um, from Derrick Henry's side. And then from DeAndre Hopkins' side, you know, this, this – so defense has been able to be attacked by the number one wide receiver. Uh, you love what his connection has been with Will Levis. And I, I do think, you know, he's got like a 27% target share on the team. So I think they do try and get him going. Uh, this is an interesting one for, uh, for those of us who are paying attention at home because DeAndre Hopkins goes up against Jalen Ramsey, a matchup that oh. those two are not unfamiliar with when uh, he was at Houston and Jalen was with the Jaguars. So um, I'm curious to see what they do. I don't you know, expect Jalen Ramsey to shadow or anything like that, but I think they'll have uh, a couple matchups going and uh, DeAndre Hopkins looks like a, a good favorite uh, to hit that line tonight. Yeah, we always talk about, you know, which players are good candidates for alt markets and Hopkins is because of the way he gets targeted. So looking at the games uh, since Will Levis began, became the starter, here are the number of D targets Hopkins has had per game. This is a 16 plus yards downfield. He had three in Levis's first start, four, five, one, two, six. Like that's the best deep, deep ball, like workload in all the football at this point. So Looking at the alternate markets uh, for DeAndre Hopkins for receiving yards, you can get him at plus 235 for 80 plus yards. That's probably where I'd want to settle in. I don't want to go too far beyond that just because like, you know, I don't expect the Titans to do a ton in this game. But I think that what that does is it gives me safety in case the Titans offense just kind of stinks. Um, and that's kind of what I'm looking for here is that insurance effectively. So Hopkins, 80 plus receiving yards, plus 235 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that is an intriguing number for me just because of the way he gets used down the field. Now, I also like Ryan, not only did he highlight, highlight Ty J Spears, but you highlighted the correct market, I think at least, um, for him is the receptions. Once that's up, which it's not up yet, as of now, but like Spears gets a lot of work, but it's kind of like Jarek McKinnon esque work where it's a lot of like dump offs, right. like a lot of empty calorie dump offs. And that's why his yardage numbers from a reception perspective are pretty underwhelming. Uh, his receiving mark at FanDuel Sportsbook is 14 and a half. In the games Levis has started, he's actually gone over that just once. So that's why I think that the reception number is is correct. I want to go that way too. Cause like I was initially like really drawn towards the Spears receiving yardage number. I was like, oh man, like this is a good, this is a good number. 14 and a half, given the potential script. Then I looked in, I was like, oh, he's getting like empty calorie targets. So I think that you're right, Ryan, where once that reception number is up, that's the right place to go for Ty J Spears. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's one where you can see merit in it, you know, even if it's not the 14, if it's not the blowout, but, you right. know, they still are playing from behind. He can still be right. out there and, and catch those passes. I agree. Okay. Any other props you like in this game, Ryan? No, I think this this one's pretty straightforward uh, uh, for me on where I'm going to be placing bets. The The next game is the one that uh, that gets a little interesting. So let's talk about it. That is the Packers at the Giants. So right now, the Packers are six-point favorites at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total in this game is 37. And Ryan, like, you know, you're up at Packerland, and they've been kind of cooking recently. They've been toast to the town of late, and they're now six-point favorites on the road. So can Jordan Love and the Packers cover a decently large number? 
Well, I think everything's on the line for them to uh, to merit this cover. You know, when you're looking at the NFC wild card picture, uh, you know they really were hoping that the Vikings uh, could either tie uh, the Raiders in <laughs> in overtime at zero zero or uh, come up with that loss. But you know that that kind of puts them at the third at the third uh, seat, uh, the seventh seat, I should say, right now. And there's a lot of six and seven teams who are right behind them, so they have everything uh, to play for in this game. They are dealing with a ton of injuries um, on both sides of the football. So that's definitely what what makes it tough here. And you know the the Giants under Dave all. They just, you know, they got a little pride that they play for. You know, this is not a team that wants to finish, you know, with the worst record um, in, in in all of football. I think they, you know, regardless of what's going on at the quarterback position, I still think they want to see what they have in some of the skill position players and things like that. And this has been, you know, a Packers defense that has been able to give up, you know, big plays. They have been playing really well since Thanksgiving against Detroit at home against the Chiefs. And so, you know, that that does uh, cause some merit for worry. But there are some explosive pieces on the giant side um, to come to fruition so i am going to lean giants plus six here um you know it's tough to go money line when you're looking at matt lafleur's record in december of being undefeated um since uh being named the head coach of the green bay packers but um this is another fun one too where like you're looking at an uh over under of 37 and it's like man, can we get some broken plays and see that go over? Um, I, I do kind of like, you know, points to come uh, from multiple angles uh, in this in this game. So I'm not I'm not sure where I'm feeling. I, if I had a lean, I would tend to go over here with the mm -hmm. plus six for the Giants. Um, but uh, yeah, I think there'll, there'll be more that rears its head once we get the full injury report. I agree with you on the over. Um, I think there is some value in the over right now. My model has that number at 39.3. So not a yeah. huge deviation from 37, but still enough where I think that it's uh, good enough to give a look there. You get a push in 37, which is good. Uh, it was 37 half earlier on. So I do think that's beneficial there. As far as the side goes, I actually show value in the Packers again. It's been a uh, thing for a bit now. Um, this is, so they're not the new Texans yet. The Texans run of, consecutive week showing value in the money line probably going to end with davis mills starting next week but um the packers it's five straight games yeah. showing value on their money line so the model likes them a lot right now and i don't really disagree i've got them favored by a little bit over eight uh so packers minus six is not bad i'm not opposed to that right now uh minus 110 for the packers side of things I just like a lot of what Jordan Love has done. Now, I think the question mark is, what does he do with no Christian Watson? Because um, when Watson was out earlier on this year, Love's efficiency marks were good, but he was not, he wasn't playing well at that time. Now he's playing well, but loses Watson again. So I'm curious what things will look like there. I'm also curious if they can get Aaron Jones back. So I do show value on the Packers minus six. I do show value in the over, but like there are concerns enough there where I think that, you could view this game a lot of different ways. So let's talk about the injuries, Ryan. Talk about the prop market. Starting me off with the Packers side of things, Aaron Jones questionable due to his knee injury. So obviously a lot of markets not up right now for them. But we do have a lot of receiving props with no Christian Watson up. So what are you seeing from a prop perspective on the Packers tonight? Yeah, I think it's interesting that they have the Aaron Jones uh, prop up at least for an anytime touchdown because um, I, I was thinking that he was on the wrong side of questionable for mm -hmm. tonight's game but you know that has some merit into thinking that he could he does have a chance to play so you know not not going to talk about anything aj dylan wise not that they're even up right now um on the line but you know that will make things interesting from the receiver standpoint you know I, like let's talk about the rookie Jaden reed here mm -hmm. um even even like from the rookie tucker crafts you know standpoint i think that there are still ways for jordan love to have success uh against this defense even with christian watson being out it's been nice to kind of see Christian Watson hit his stride for those of us who, you know, drafted him, uh, where we drafted him pre you know, preseason, thinking about he would be the guy. But, you know, there's been no the guy, quote unquote, for, for this team. And so, you know, Romeo Dobbs has had his struggles with catching the football. Jaden Reed has kind of been the only one um, who's kind of been consistent, at least uh, when it comes to performance. So I do like getting uh, some action on Jaden Reed where I can. I think he's two to one to score an anytime touchdown uh, tonight as well, uh, which you love the way he's been targeted in the red zone. And Romeo will definitely get get his uh, get his looks for sure. Um, but I think that Jaden Reed has definitely been the guy for uh, for Jordan Love to count on outside of uh, 
outside of Christian Watson. So um, that's that's where I'll be going. Tucker Craft is another interesting one there, the rookie tight end who's been able to get some work uh, with Musgrave being out. He's close to three to one for an anytime touchdown and has a couple red zone targets since the Thanksgiving game. So I'd be willing to go go there as well, too. Yeah, I love that you highlighted Jaden Reeks. I think that's the right place to go for tonight, specifically the touchdown market. You mentioned the way he's used inside the red zone. And like, it's not just the pass catching, but also like they sometimes get in rush attempts. Um, it's not necessarily always in the red zone. Uh, he's had a couple that have been like right outside yeah. of it. He's actually converted into touchdowns. But like, I think that what that tells me is that they want the ball in his hands. And I want that. I value that. Um, so I think that, that's why Reed to me is interesting there. It seems like they like his skill set. They like his speed in close. And I've brought up this comp before, but like it's like uh, back in the day when the Bills would use Isaiah McKenzie inside the red zone. Like he would not be used anywhere else, but then he would inside the red zone. They're like, okay, we want this guy's speed out there. And he would come through on that. Now, Reed gets used beyond that. So it's not just uh, the not just the red zone where he emerges, but I do think that they like the way he operates down there. So to, uh, two to one uh, for any time touchdown for Jaden Reed. If I like the Packers minus six, like the over, I do think that is the best, you know, touchdown market for me right now is Jaden Reed two to one. I also would look at his uh, reception prop because he doesn't get a ton of downfield work. It's, it's a lot of like, you know, stuff close to the line of scrimmage. He's plus one Oh two to get over four and a half receptions. I mean, I'm indifferent about that one. I think I prefer the touchdown market, but um, he is, I agree with you, Ryan, the guy I'm turning to first here is Jaden Reed. Yeah, love that, love that call out there for sure. Okay, giant side of thing, Ryan. They are finally showing a pulse with Tommy DeVito at quarterback, as we all expected. Anything stand out to you with the giant side of things here? Well, I think we, we got to look at Saquon Barkley first and foremost, you know, um, just being able to get to – get some traction going uh for for him you know he's got signed the contract and things haven't been great for them but you know uh, with the home game here against green bay i expect to see them uh get their best player involved here so you know you're looking at his rushing prop there at 69 and a half probably will look at his rushing um and receiving prop here just for him to be able to do everything with with devito if these guys are able to get pressure on on green bay side um we know how explosive saquon barkley can be so i think think there's there's definitely some merit um to getting his rushing and receiving prop line uh anytime touchdown his reception prop is three and a half i believe at plus money like absolutely love that with him being a dog um in this game so he, he gotta look at that i am disappointed that we're not getting um receiving prop lines as it stands right now on jalen hylett um Jalen Hyatt, excuse me, Hyatt, like the uh, hotel residency. Um, this guy has been uh, amazing uh, as of late, just as far as getting involved. And I think, you know, the buy, uh, he was performing really well b um, before the buy. Um, and people might have forgotten about that. But, you know, Jalen Hyatt, we had been talking about him um, kind of preseason as he's, you know, just such an explosive player, you know, and they have kind of some of these guys like, you know, Darius Slayton uh, and Hyatt who can just go down there and, and catch a bomb from DeVito. But, you know, the, the backup connection there has kind of been working in, in Jalen Hyatt's favor with uh, Tommy DeVito. So let's get him pl plus 550 to score an anytime touchdown. I think there's definitely merit to for these guys to get lost behind Joe Barry's defense. Um, Wando Robinson is another one who's interesting to me. You know, he's six to one in the touchdown props market, but I think even from a receiving yard standpoint, like these have been the two most consistent guys for Tommy DeVito as of late. And you're looking at, you know, his reception prop, you know, three is minus 156. So heavily expect him to be involved there. So I would look at getting some action on his uh, receiving yards or possibly in the alt market on receptions if we could. Yeah, to get four plus receptions for Wandale is plus 144 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I think, again, that's kind of the market I want to go to with him just because I don't think he's going to get a lot of yardage, but I think that the receptions could be there. So four plus receptions uh, for Ron or for Wandale is uh, plus 144. And the other guy you mentioned, Ryan, was Jalen Hyatt. I think it's a good sign that we're on the exact same page for tonight because my favorite's uh, – Packers prop was a Jaden Reed touchdown. My favorite Giants prop is a Jalen Hyatt touchdown at plus 550. He had been getting snaps for a bit, and you know he was out there. He was running some cardio, stuff like that, but suddenly starting to earn some targets. It happened when Darius Slayton first got hurt, but then Slayton was doubtful for week 
13 or week 12 before their bye week. And then Slayton played, but then Hyatt still had his breakout in that game. So plus 550 for a guy who has talent, gets downfield work, has shown a rapport, as you said, with DeVito. That's pretty fun. So I think that if I'm picking one prop on the Giants side, it'd be Jalen High at plus 550. Anytime touchdown. Once those reception numbers are up, he'd also be a guy I'd look to in alt markets because he just gets a lot of downfield work. So I would say Hyatt is the primary guy I would turn to for the Giants for tonight. Any other props stand out to you across this game, Ryan? Yeah, I'll probably be looking at Jordan Love props just just in general. I mean, he's been playing at such an, such an incredible pace um, as of recently against you know teams that they um, you know Lions they were not favored, uh, Chiefs they were not favored, and so you get a game where now he is the favorite. Um, let's see what he can do. So yeah, over on his passing yards at two twenty uh, five and a half, uh, definitely like that. You know, he's minus one hundred two at at uh, over one and a half on the touchdown props market. So that's interesting. But the other thing I will say, you know. We'll We'll, we'll do Druckle and Hyde here. Um, when it gets released, I will be looking at the interception prop market because, you know, just traveling <laughs> on the road here and we got a prime time. I, I definitely have to look at it. I know that some other uh, places have the prop up right now. It is plus money. Um, and so a FanDuel, uh, if this FanDuel Sportsbook releases that as well, too, I'll be attacking that. I love it. Uh, I won't tell your neighbors that this is the case, Ryan, believe me, um, <laughs> about the Jordan Love interception prop. Uh, the yardage number is low. Um, he has not yeah. gone under 225 and a half since October 22nd. That was the Denver game. Um, it's been a bit. So I'm into that. I think that's a pretty low number. 225 and a half over is minus 113. So I think that's a good way to go at love. And again, uh, we'll keep it under wraps that you are on the interception prop once it is posted over at Bangle Sportsbook. That. <laughs> <laughs> that is all that we have here for today for this Monday night doubleheader. But Ryan is back with us once again tomorrow at Talks and Futures. I'll dig into the week 15 spreads, totals, and money lines where my model shows value as well. But Ryan... Appreciate the time as always. Good luck to you tonight. Uh, and we'll talk to you once again tomorrow morning. Yeah, sounds good, Jim. Good luck to everybody on the double header for Monday night. We love it. Tune in. Uh, I appreciate it, Jim. We'll catch you tomorrow. Absolutely. Find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim Dotsonis and find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your uh, bets tonight, with your DFS lineups, whatever it may be. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.